So, are you there now? Yes, yes. So I said it may interest you to know that agribusiness apparently is the oldest form of business and was uh, commanded to be carried out just after man was created by God. Meaning, it is the foundation of all businesses, it is indispensable, and the business that has a divine mandate. Do you believe me? Are you surprised? Just follow me on this uh, short expose. God created man and woman, placed them in the garden of Eden and commanded them to dress, eat, and keep it. For the Christians, this will be found in Genesis 2.15. I'm sure also there will be a similar reference for other religions. And we recall this was at the inception of the world. In essence, agribusiness is the first form of business divinely enabled, indispensable and sustainable. It was the agribusiness that now gave rise to other forms of businesses. Neglecting the agribusiness is like saying one doesn't need one skin, which is the covering for your whole body. And that explains why countries, why countries that uh, neglect their agri sector will end up or usually ends up with their economy in comatose. I'm not mentioning any countries, please. But you can use your thumb to count your feet. We go to the next slide. That's where we are. In this, which is introduction, in this particular lecture series, we'll be dealing with a lot of technical terms. I already communicated that to us. I will try as much as possible to simplify and make the meaning of terms used apparent in subsequent statements. Um, if I'm too fast, please uh, put up your hand so that uh, I can slow down. I am conscious of the fact that the class I'm talking to this morning, they have little or no knowledge about the subject matter. But be that as it may, if you pay rapt attention, you will enjoy this series. Just like we said earlier that uh, procurement was very critical to the survival of your business. So also is documentation. If you don't get it right, in fact, with documentation, if you don't get it right, you'll be termed a smuggler. So please pay proper attention. Due to the technical nature of this series, that is series six, and the need for mentees to have a good grasp of the content, we will be handling it in two stages. So we will divide it into pre-shipment documentation and post-shipment documentation. Today, we'll just be handling pre-shipment documentation. At another lecture series, we will now have the continuation of today's topic, which will be post-shipment documentation. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, we're there. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm not saying it. Next slide. Yeah, we are on the next slide already. Oh. What's your next slide? Definition. Definitions, right? De yes, definition. Okay. Definitions. Remember the topic says shipment documentation. So we'll try and define what shipment is, what documentation is, and now link both. Shipment of freight transportation, uh, transporting is a physical process of transporting commodities and merchandise, goods, and cargo. 
the term shipping originally referred to transport by sea originally, but in today's world, it has been extended to refer to transport by land, by sea, or by air. Simply put, a shipment is an amount of a particular kind of cargo that is sent to another country on a ship, train, airplane, or other uh, vehicular mode. While documentation is any communicable material that is used to describe, explain, or instruct regarding some attributes of an object, system, or procedure, such as parts, assembly, installation, maintenance, and use. Documentation can be provided on paper, online, like we are doing, or on digital or analog media, such as tape or CDs. Shipment documentation is there for the relevant is there for the relevant documentation put in place as required for a cargo to be shipped. Next slide. Ready already. Okay. As is uh, the norm with our mentoring series, before we take up any new topic, we want to be sure that all of us are on the same page. To that effect, I want us to recap what we learned on series five topic, the contents, and then the answers to the series five case study. Remember, series five had to do with procurement of exportable agri-producer commodities. So in summary, we stated, or we agreed, or we explained and we saw it, that the attention paid to your commodity procurement can make or mar your export business. This can endear you to your customer or be your last business with that particular company. It could also enhance your business reputation in the international space or make you lose face with the regulatory authorities. We stated also that it can make your products sell at a premium or at a discounted rate. What do I mean by this? If you are renowned to always ship very high quality premium products, you can call it the, you can call the shots with your customers. It means you give your price. You could be asking for say $200 on top of what the market is doing and they wouldn't mind paying that price, that premium price, reason being that they know that your signature is on your consignment. It can also improve or disadvantage you for payment terms with your customers. What do I mean? If your customer is confident that what you're shipping is what they want, it's not going to run into any quality issues, they wouldn't mind giving you an upfront payment. Sometimes they can even prepare you before the shipment takes place. So, <laughs> Uh, I don't need to overemphasize the need for you to pay attention to the quality of what you are procuring for export. You can lose your trading capital completely if your goods are returned at the port of destination. You don't want that to happen. Assuming your, say, shipping a consignment worth $25,000 to say uh, any port in the US. And unfortunately, there are quality issues 
they will spare you. The goods will either be destroyed at the port of entry, and you also pay for the cost of destruction, or they send it back to their country of origin. And when the consignment is sent back, you will pay the detention costs at the port of entry. You will also pay to freight the goods back, and when it gets to Nigerian shores, you will also clear the consignment again as if you imported the products into the country. By the time you add all this, it will completely erode whatever the value of that uh, consignment is. So please, please, mentees, you don't want that to happen. You need to pay attention to your commodities for export. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, we are there. Are we there? Yes. Okay. We there. Remember um, the class assignment we gave. We had said that for the listed uh, Nigerian exportable products that you should, which we were told in the course of that uh, lecture series, that we should, as an assignment, state where they are sourced in Nigeria. How many of us attempted to do that? Uh, I wouldn't know how many, but I'll just uh, run through maybe two, three of them. Something like a uh, clean system message, it's in Kano, you find that. That does not say that uh, you can't find it in other states. Something like Cashew Canal, you find it in Benue, Nasarawa, Kugi, Inugu, and Okigwe region of Imo State. Cocoa beans, you have it in Ondo, Cross River, Edo State, and so on. Dried hibiscus flower, you have it in Kano, Jigawa State. And then ginger, you have it in uh, Kaduna State. Next slide. So I will encourage us to use the goggle. Remember what I said at the onset of this mentoring series is that my work is just to give you leads. Your own is to get the answers. And goggle is a tool that we we'll need to be referring to every now and then. Use your goggle, you will get all the answers. Don't wait for me to always tell you where to find what. Google is our indispensable tool in this uh, mentoring series. We now go straight to pre-shipment documentation, which is our topic for series six. Please pay attention. We will have an ample opportunity for us to ask questions. Having procured, graded, and packaged your products ready for export, the next thing to do is to move the consignment to the port of shipment. That is seaport or cargo terminal of the airport or the courier company you plan to use. You know, you can uh, use courier companies to send your products abroad. You can also use a plane in countries or climes where their rail system is functioning properly, you can also put your containers on the rail and they get to uh, neighboring countries. For the purposes of this lesson, we will assume that the goods to be exported is by sea or by air freight. You air freight light and highly perishable commodities like say uh, flowers, fresh flowers, vegetables, and the like. 
Um, reason being that the cost of uh, fretting is quite high. Uh, so if you if uh, and they will uh, fret based on a uh, weight, and you <laughs> no customer will be able to pay the fret charges if you have to a uh, fret bulky commodities. So that's why a uh, fretting is best suited for light and perishable commodities. You know they. Uh, something like fresh flowers now, say something like uh, rose flowers, fresh rose flowers. It's uh, like next day delivery. If not, uh, it will get rotten. Something like vegetables. You're sending vegetables to the UK. You can only uh, fret it. Um, Microsoft is here to des uh, <laughs> design a software that will prevent such commodities from uh, getting bad. So I went on to say that the relevant documentation needed will depend on the stage of the transaction. For that, we will have three stages of transaction. And this will be one. You have gotten your goods ready for export. You are about dispatching it from the purchasing location to the shipment venue. These are needed documentations that you need to ensure that they are in place. If not, you might run into avoidable challenges. So once the goods are ready, the first thing you do is to prepare a custom gate pass letter and submit to Nigerian customs. Then you apply to government independent inspection agents, alerting them that you have this consignment that will soon show up and that you need them to inspect it. For now, the name of the company is Neroli. Previously, the federal government had used, um, uh, what's their name now? They, they had used, um, I'll get back to that as soon as I remember their name. So in writing, you also need to inform Federal Produce Inspection Authority whose responsibility will be to fumigate this consignment, as well as to reconfirm the quality and quantity of the goods you're claiming to have. Then you will also need to book for empty containers to be used for the stuffing of that particular product through the shipping line of your choice on the IntraWorks platform. Shipping lines are uh, maybe Mask Line, uh, Grimalde, MSC, and so on and so forth. Depending on which shipping line you want to export your products through, you need to go to IntraWorks platform and book for empty containers. Remember again, I said all these processes need to have taken place before the consignment shows up at the shipment uh, uh, town or venue. The IntraWorks platform is an automated platform and common for all shipping lines, container shipment book, bookings. When a booking is made, a confirmation is sent to you within 48 hours from the relevant shipping line. But if you want to fast track the process, you can also send your evidence of the container booking to your shipping line directly as soon as you receive it from IntraWorks platform. Then another step you need to take is that you need to open your NXP for the shipment. 
using your prepared uh, commercial invoice, parking list. This again is an automated process which is done on CBN trade monitoring platform. You complete the NXP application stating the port where the, uh, where the consignments will be living from, where it is going to, the value, the unit price, the freight cost, and all that is contained on the NXP um, online application com completion. Then if you're using a logistics company, next slide please, you need to, that is on arrival of the goods to the shipment town now. So I'm assuming that you would have now trucked your consignment to the shipment town. Assuming it's Lagos. Let's take Lagos, for example. So now the goods are in Lagos. What do you do? If you're using a logistics company, pay attention, please. Notify the logistics company about the consignment and release both your empty container reference from Entraworks and the shipping lines confirmation re reference to them. The reference numbers will allow them access to the pre-planned empty container meant to be used for your consignment stuffing. There are other things exporters do, which I shouldn't be telling you because uh, there are not things I would want you to be doing as my mentees. I would prefer you do the right things so that you don't get uh, into trouble with the regulatory authorities. I mean, in terms of container booking and access, empty container booking and access. So with that in place, with the reference number you've been given to assess an empty container through the logistics company or at a designated uh, warehouse in Lagos, your consignment from wherever it's coming from will not be transloaded into the ocean liner container. I don't know if you get me right. It means, you remember, these goods, say you discharge them from, you dispatch them from Niger State. They are coming in, even if they are coming in containers, that will not be the container that the goods will eventually leave the country in. You still need the official container, official inputs now, container from the shipping line we uh, plan to use to transload the goods. So when transloading is to be done, you need some federal agencies to be on hand to inspect. One of them is Federal Produce Inspection Agency because they are the ones regulating everything that has to do with agri produce. Remember, we are talking about agri produce now. So they will be on hand to fumigate the consignment. This fumigation of the consignment is not uh, uh, using sniper. <laughs> you are not using sniper to fumigate the consignment, but there are edible chemicals that are used to fumigate edible consignment. That will be part of your assignment for today. You will be requested to go and find out what chemicals can you use to fumigate your edible produce. Other relevant agencies will also be on site to expect uh, to inspect the stuffing of your container. 
These agencies include NDLE, LE. Their work is to ensure that you're not exporting maybe cocaine or heroin or wheat, uh, marijuana inside your container. Plant quarantine will also be there. Their work is to ensure that the produce you are exporting out of Nigeria is free from infestation of, say, weevils, rodents, and then that the quality of the products is such that it will not bring shame to Nigeria in the international space. Then the federal government independent inspectors. Remember, I had told us uh, that currently they are using a company called Neroli. They will also be there. That takes me back to the others. Previously, they had used a company called uh, Kaman Astea. They had also used uh, Kotekna. They had also used, um, um, when I remember that, I'll tell us again. Then forestry will also be there. This depends on the produce you are exporting. If it's something like logs, wood, Forestry will be there to confirm the status of that consignment. Other agencies will be SSS, police, Nigerian customs, and so on. After all these inspections, the container is then sealed and ready for shipment. But after, you know, you won't just pick the container and go and uh, ship now at this stage. You still need to do further documentation. But at least physically, your consignment is now ready to go. It's for you, it's for it to be uh, dropped at the seaside while other documentations will still take place or at the airlines um, cargo site. Stuffing and sealing of the container. These are the steps, documentation steps. First and foremost, you file your commercial invoice and packing list with the federal government inspectors, Neroli, online on the CBN trade monitoring systems platform. Before, all this used to be handled uh, physically, manually, I would say, but because the federal government of Nigeria is paying particular attention to foreign exchange transactions, they want to make sure that all the leakages in the economy are blocked by you know, automating most of these processes so that if you say you are an exporter, as you are starting up with your transaction, they have knowledge of it. At the point you say you have concluded, they have knowledge of it. The work of Neroli, the federal government inspectors, is to issue a document called CCI. This CCI, um, I don't know if I should tell us, but uh, I think it will be part of our assignment. Please find out. I don't know if I've included it as part of our assignment for today, but in case I have not, you will need to find out what CCI means. I'm sure some of us in the house also will know. So when you now... The next step 
will be that within 24 hours to 48 hours, their applicable nest fee payment will be sent to your email from that platform, that uh, CBN trade monitoring platform, requesting you to make the nest fee payment. Again, we will need to, as part of our assignment, tell me what nest fee means. The next fee will be sent through your bankers. Say you're using First Bank. First Bank will now alert you that you need to pay so 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 amount as next fee for your consignment. For now, the next fee is 0.5% of the of your invoice value. That is the value of your consignment. You need to pay. Uh, the next is like levy, but you would tell me in your assignment what the NESS what it stands for is like levy. So let me uh, let me give us uh, that general knowledge information that it's like a levy you pay to the government for your exports outside the country. After you have made payment of your next fee, then again, the platform sends evidence of the next fee payment to the independent inspectors. Remember, Neroli, I keep calling Neroli so that you know that they are independent inspectors. They will now issue the CCI. Now I'm telling you that CCI means clean certificate of inspection. Okay. Previously, cobalt inspection services, as well as Kaman Asaya, have been independent quality inspectors for the federal government. The independent inspectors will again upload the CCI, the certificate they have issued you on the CBN trade monitoring platform for the CBN as an evidence that you have done what you need to do. And they have also done their part that they are testing that what you claim to be exporting is what, it's, what it is. On that platform, Nigeria Customs is also on it. So as you're uploading, the relevant agencies, the relevant organizations, the relevant bodies are seeing and they are assessing and they are taking record. You then hand over a copy of your, okay. So at this stage, you have done all you need to do. You now hand over every document you have to your forwarding agent to now forward your consignment. With a copy, photocopy, I'm not saying original because the original CCI is a critical document for your export business. But in clearing up your records with uh, your bank, CBN, Export Promotion Council, Federal Ministry of Finance, and all that. So it's the photocopy of your CCI that you will now release to your appointed uh, forwarding agent. Some companies also may decide to do self-forwarding. But whichever angle you want to come from, the processes are just the same. The only thing is that if you have a trusted uh, forwarder and you're able to control what you give him, their operations, the turnaround time for you to get your documentation done might be shorter. Some also have, have the experience that when they give to forwarding agents, they keep telling them endless stories 
and uh, no work is actually done. But whatever be the case, you need at this stage to ensure that custom papers are in place for that consignment to be on board. So the forwarding agent, or if you want to do it by yourself, will need to generate what is called custom gates entry permits, as well as custom release for the shipment of that consignment. As an exporter, you have the choice of appointing a clearing and forwarding agent to handle. I already said that, I stated that earlier. So depending on what you choose to do, um, please next slide, whether you're doing directly or through an agent, either way, they follow you. It needs to be done. Next slide, please. Are we there? One, completion of SGD form. Again, you will help me find out what SGD stands for. But if you want me to tell you, it's single goods declaration form so that the questions will not be too many. I know even as I'm telling you to find out, some people are going to put up their hand now and ask me, what does it mean? So to forward and uh, to do the documentation at this stage, the custom release will include a form called SGD form. It is a critical form, single goods declaration form. Um, on that form, you have, uh, it will also request for almost same information. But this one will carry container number, carry sale number, carry all the product and all that. And then which custom officer is signing, who has signed, who didn't sign. You will also have a physical inspection. You would have done physical inspection of your consignment by the independent inspectors. In summary form now, please pay attention. You would have also fumigated your consignment if need be. But there are some products that you don't need to fumigate. Something like gum arabic, uh, weevils, it's not, it's hardly weevil infested. So fumigation may not be necessary. Then you would have booked, you would have had a booking for shipments with a shipping line on a particular vessel then you would have containerized your goods. You would have sealed the container. Inspection of the container by relevant port agencies would have been carried out. Remember the police, SSS, NAFDAQ and all. When all the above have been completed, your forwarder, after punching your shipment, <laughs> returns a set of these documents to you. What is punching? Punching is a procedure at the shipment port, whether by air or by sea, where you go and impute in another automated platform the value of your consignment with your tax ID. So automatically, it's like it's taking record. Government is taking record of what you're doing tax-wise. So you must have a tax ID for you to do punching. Good thing, um, export companies, they don't pay tax in the last uh, two years, provided your proceeds are repatriated back to Nigeria. Uh, the federal government, it's like an incentive to encourage exporters to do more so that, uh, you know, they will help in bringing in foreign exchange, the much needed foreign exchange into the economy of Nigeria. 
So when the forwarder does the punching, he now returns the document to you with the computed SG, SGD form, the custom gets documents, the relevant agency's uh, attest attestation, which they did by signing off on different, uh, on their letterheads that this is a genuine shipment. So when this has been done, you now post your shipping instruction called SI. Hmm? The, the, this shipping instruction can also be done at the point of stuffing to save time. So the shipping instruction will be this the shipping instruction will be for your designated uh, ocean liner vessel schedule and you do this after checking the website of that ocean liner that is the shipping company to know what schedule they have to know which vessel will suit your purpose so it's it will not be beneficial to you if, as you want to complete your shipping instruction, you now go and choose a vessel that is selling the same week you're stuffing your consignment. You will agree with me that with all these processes, it will be tough for you to conclude all this within two weeks, before two weeks. So uh, it's, it will make sense for you to choose a vessel that will come in, say, in two weeks or will be ready to pick your consignment in two weeks or three weeks when you would have been done with all the processes you need to go through with your documentation. So your forwarder will give you, or he will also, or he may, depending on what arrangements you have with him, submit the custom release to the shipping line. But uh, this is a sensitive document. So most exporters would rather have their own staff or personnel do that. But if you're using a forwarder, it means you would have, you know, like uh, you would have introduced that forwarder to the shipping line that uh, the forwarder is good enough to handle your documents. So the forwarder or your staff will hand over the custom release to the shipping line. What is custom release? Custom release is like custom will now sign that they have checked. So you have done all the needed documentation. You've gone through all the processes you need to go through for this uh, consignment to be shipped. So with that, the shipping line will know that... Uh, your consignment is uh, good to go. The shipping line, this is a new introduction. It didn't used to be like this, but this is a recent introduction in the last one year. The shipping line then submits your NXP number and container number to CBN for clearance again. Before there was no CBN intervention at this stage, but it's a new introduction still to strengthen the process of foreign exchange uh, inflow into the country. The shipping line needs a clearance. CBN has to clear that consignment to go. That is the way it is now. Before the shipping line can carry any of your containers on their vessel. If this is not done, it means in the government's eyes, it is an illegal business. So it is after the CBN clears the shipping line that they can now book your consignment on a carrier vessel. Your forwarder 
simultaneously send a set of your pre-shipment documentation papers to the Nigerian customs to issue what is called custom closure. The custom closure document is an attestation by the customs office, Nigerian customs office, at the seaport or cargo port that you have concluded a legitimate uh, transaction. When your consignment eventually sells, the shipping line will issue you a vessel departure alert. Thank you. I think I've um, taken time to as much as possible explain these technicalities. It is good since uh, we have decided to go into agri-export business for you to understand the nitty gritty of what you have signed on to do. If you leave it to the agents, they'll come back and tell you one million stories, why something is not. So it is better you have a good knowledge, good grasp of what you have decided to do so that at each point in time, you're in control of your transactions, you're in control of your business. You can ask questions. If uh, an agent is not performing, you, you can uh, profile solutions on how to get it uh, better. So I will pause here for us to ask questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, I think you need to raise up your hands, then ask, uh, then you'll be asked to unmute. So, for example, we have Kazim Kenyde, right? Unmute yourself and speak, Kenyde. Kazim. <laughs> Um, good, af good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for the um, for the opportunity. This is my first time of attending the um, series. So, um, actually, this my question is not related to this series in particular. Mine is that for to start exporting, how do you um, being able to get your customers abroad? That's just my own question because, of course, uh, before you can want, you want to sell, you must have customers that are willing to so. How will you be able to get customers that are willing to buy from you? That's just my question, man. Thank you, man. Do, do we have other questions? Any other question? Anybody has more questions? Uh, Frankie, show me. Go ahead. Frankie, we're waiting for you. Yeah, sorry. I'm trying to. Oh, yeah. Hope you can hear me. Yes. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, my question is going to be a little bit uh, different from, uh, I mean, wider than uh, the scope we just covered now. Um, it looked very scary uh, listening to this. Uh, it's my first time, anyway, here. But it looks scary looking at all these st uh, stages one needs to go to export uh, out of Nigeria. And uh, one thing comes to mind straight away. All these customs, NDLEA, police, SSS, independent inspector, all the names you hear. Would this, I'm talking now in Nigerian context now, would this not amount to draining one's pocket with the Nigerian kind of uh, uh, peculiarity of the way they work. But the reason I'm saying this, uh, I made up my mind two months ago to start exporting out of Nigeria, which is something I started working on in, in, uh, in the past uh, uh, two months now. But before then, prior to this, I've been importing to Nigeria for the past six years, and I've been importing, exporting within Europe, America for two decades. Um, I mean, I'm based in London, but I just thought within myself, five years ago, I started bringing to Nigeria. Then just two months ago, I said, because of my experience in Nigeria, when I, I, I preach uh, uh, supply chain shipment 
around the globe, apart from Nigeria. Nigeria just started five years ago. But my experience in Nigeria is completely different from what I do in America, in Australia, in Europe, and the rest of them. So that got me to the point where I said, oh, you know what, let me start taking it out of Nigeria, which I started working on two months ago. And uh, the very first con uh, consignment will be leaving soon. I mean, I'm trying to get to the goods and all the rest of them. But hearing all these stages, because we, what we read, what we used to read on paper is that the government's trying to do everything to, to enhance, to encourage people to export uh, out of Nigeria. But with what I just heard today, it is scary. It's contrary to what they say. And uh, that, that being said, now, if we are going to do, do we physically need to see these people face to face, one on one? I don't know if everything is automated, that we don't need to see each other. That is my first question. The second question is, is, it, uh, is, is this also applicable to goods like uh, processed goods like Gary? And that is processed from the uh, original cassava. When it's processed uh, good like Gary, do we need all this inspection, fumigation, and all the rest of them, and all these procedures? Or it's only for raw agri agricultural goods? That's my second question. And uh, um, the last one is, is there no other ways around all this process? Thank you. I hope you can hear me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have, is there any, any other question we have? We have um, Oriomi. Okay. And Ifine. So after Oriomi, Ifine. Okay. Hello. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay. Yes, what I want to ask is that are there, are there some logistic companies that could handle some of all this documentation with some cost so that one would not go through all this by itself, apart from the forwarding company? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hello, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's the question. Is there any logistic company that can handle some of this? I mean, this documentation without having to go through the stress. Okay. I, don't, I think that is that all, those are all the questions, right? Mm -hmm. If I your hand is still up. If I okay, good. Madam, over to you. Oh, if I have you have you asked your question then? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, my question is uh thank you, HRM and Daku, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I want to ask. Because this is my first time of joining uh, the webinar. The last time I wanted to join, uh, I wasn't able because the capacity has uh, filled up. So now my question is, what are the first steps to take in starting a, exporting a business? That's number one question. And two, uh, if one wants to carry out uh, export of yam to uh, abroad, um, is there a, a, a um, is this sanitizer? How do I call it? Fumigation. The fumigation. Is there a fumigation for young? And thirdly, although somebody has asked that question, I stated it on the chat. Um, how do we source for a client in abroad? Thank you. Thank you. One. Any other question? I think that that was Idris Adelabu. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. 
So my question uh, has to do with uh, risk and risk to reward ratio when picking commodities to exports. You know, like, um, I mean, from the documentation, it's, it's, it's scary to be honest, you know, looking at the entire processes that one has to go through, you know, but for things like uh, perishable products, say vegetables, for instance, or uh, products that has a turnaround time of say two, two days. So in terms of the uh, reward that comes with such kind of, kind of products, vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, you know, having to go through this entire process of, um, of two weeks or even there about for the large type of items. So what, what can you, what do you advise in terms of risk to reward? Because I, I want to believe that the, 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 the processes that you've taken us through, you know, it's kind of much more risky and much scary. But if the reward is, is something that one could contain, yes, it's an area I won't put it. Okay, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Are we done? Yes. Yes, the questions are true. They are true, the questions. Okay. Um, the first person that asked question is uh, Kazim, who, who stated that today is his first time, and uh, he wanted to know how one can get uh, customers abroad. Uh, like, uh, from the topic, you can see that this is our sixth lecture in this series it means you've missed a lot so uh, the moderators will tell you how to catch up but we have gone far we have gone far a lot of the mentees on this platform won't uh, ask that question but since today is your first time of joining at the end of the uh, lecture the mentee the moderators will tell the mentees that want to know that are joining for the first time how to get uh, information concerning our previous our previous series then two frankie you also said today is your first time you uh, you are a bit concerned that there are so many agencies and then you're worried that would these agencies drain your pockets and then you went on to ask some specific questions Oh, if you recall at the inception of today's uh, class, I had told us that the topic is technical. I encourage us to pay attention. Though it's technical, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you cannot do it. You can do it. And recall also that during my presentation, I had told us that you have the option of either doing this directly or contracting it out to a third party, a forwarding agent. But then I told you that the whole essence is for you to have a good understanding and knowledge of you know, the different aspects of your business, what is going on. So that even if you are in the office controlling what is going on, you'll be able to know when somebody is telling you a lie, when it's a factual case, when somebody is trying to cook up things just to bamboozle and uh, confuse you. So uh, the essence is not necessarily for you to be out there at the port doing this but as an export company like all the pre-shipments you know or, or from the pre-shipment documentation you can see that there are three stages you must necessarily as an export uh, company do the ones 
you need to do before the consignment gets to the shipping port. So you need to do that. It's not something you want to contract. You know, when they are talking about export business, people will get excited and they want to export. Reason being that they want to earn dollars. But the government is also particular about uh, these uh, dollars. They don't want to let go. Uh, before the system was a bit porous, you could uh, get uh, away with a lot of this, but that's no longer the, uh, the case. They are tightening, you know, the leakages because <laughs> every day we are told what our debt portfolio is. Nigeria keeps borrowing from here and there. The oh, today's rate, uh, you know what the exchange rate is for today. Uh -huh. So they want to make sure that the business of export is properly done, not in smuggling form. And I can bet you also, when you try to cut corners by doing what the government will term illegal, by trying to save yourself, wahala now, in quotes, you will end up spending more and you are not getting good returns for your efforts. Why am I saying this? If you do it properly the way it's supposed to be done, what is required? The government requires you to make nest fee payments, which I told us is 0.5%. 0.5%, not up to half percent, half percent, not up to one percent of the value of your export. So if you make that payment to government, you pay that levy. In return, the government will pay you EEG, Export Expansion Grant, which ranges from 1% to 30%, depending on your rating. The government gives you that grant. That is, Good news number one. Good news number two, that your proceeds, your turnover is tax exempt. Hmm? So with these two, with these two pluses, it's enough to encourage you to go into export and do it genuinely, do it uh, legally. When Nigerian customs see that you're trying to you know, cut corners. They will help you collect your money. You know what we are now. You already stated it. They will, you know, you will spend your money, but in the wrong direction, and you're not getting good reward for your effort. So it is better you do it officially, formally, legally, so that you get good reward for your efforts. Then, with all those, let the processes not scare you at all. From A to Z of what I've narrated, for, say, a 40 feet container, hmm, where police is signing, SS is signing, um, NGL is uh, attesting, Nigerian customs are there. For a 40 feet container, it's not going to cost you more than 40,000 naira per container. All those papers, all those uh, dugun tarin che, like Aousa would say, that I was speaking, is not costing you more than 40,000 naira per container. So it's not really expensive. But if you are trying to avoid the process as it were, you might end up spending uh, two, three hundred thousand to sidetrack and you'll be shooting yourself in the feet. Um, then specifically, I'm talking to Frankie now, and I'm sure most of us are also learning from this. Specifically, to you know the questions you now narrow down. That does one need to see all these agencies? No. Use your friend for what? You don't need to see them. I don't see them. I've never seen them. But the work is getting done. Then, you also wanted to know if one is exporting Gary, whether 
all this will be applicable. Hmm? I'm telling you that if you're exporting Gary out of Nigeria, which is a processed product, there are other requirements apart from this. Gary export out of Nigeria will need to have certification. That one is a topic for another day, not today's uh, 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 lecture series. That's something we can take up again in future. But Gary will not be easy for you to export. You will need to have certifications on Gary. Gary currently is being smuggled out of Nigeria, not exported. And remember I said, unless the uh, process is done like this, if not, it's seen as smuggling. So Nigerian exports of Gary, outside the shores of Nigeria is being smuggled. But the inception of this lecture series, I had told us also that when you go to say African stores abroad, you see Nigerian Gary, but packaged and coming in from Ghana with certifications with proper levels. Meaning that you can export Gary to Ghana other West African countries. And then they also find their way to the international market. But if you're exporting Gary out of Nigeria, <laughs> you need to understand I uh, We don't know how, oh, oh, Gary is bulky, so you can't even uh, fret it. Then if you're sending it by sea, Remember, some of the vessels will take well over two months to get there. You're looking at 60 days. Gary, inside a container, ocean liner container, can it survive for 60 days without turning black? Uh -huh. The option will be to use ventilated containers or refrigerated containers, and that will make it really, really expensive. So if you're thinking of exporting Gary in, in commercial quantity, you really need to, you know, uh, do some studies to make sure you get it right so that you won't say you left this uh, lecture series and uh, you burnt your, your fingers. Then your question number three, you were wondering whether there are other ways around this. I already addressed that. There are no shortcuts. Use your forwarding agent. It's not so expensive. Let them do the work. They know how best to do. It costs about 40000 for them to run through all those documentations for one uh, 40 feet container. Then I don't know who asked the question number three. I didn't quite get that name. But the question is, are there logistics companies that can handle these stages? Logistics companies. Yes, they can handle those stages. They can help you do the containerization if your goods are the, are the uh, shipment town. They will help you. They can also help you run the uh, custom documentations, entries, inspection, and all that. Uh, the bill is going to be higher but all the same, you need to have a good knowledge of every aspect of your business. So you need to understand your business. That is the whole essence of, of today's uh, topic. If I said he's a first timer, wanted to know the first step for export business. Again, I take you to what I answered uh, the first person that I asked. If you go through our previous uh, lecture series, you will uh, know that. Then you are wondering whether YAM exports, for YAM exports, whether you need to do fumigation. Please don't even try to export YAM. <laughs> I'm just telling you, you can't handle it. Um, uh, my own organization, we've been in the business of uh, 
Nigerian agri produce export for well over 25 years. We won't export the yam. We won't even venture into it. If you remember, they celebrated yam export out of Nigeria about two or three years ago. That consignment got to its port of discharge almost completely rotten. Reason being that the exporter or exporters didn't understand it to know the nature, the perishable nature of yam. To realize that yam, which me and you we eat, you can't put it in an enclosed space for too long a time. It will cook itself. So if you need to export yam outside the shores of Nigeria, you will need refrigerated containers. You will need ventilated containers. And by the time it's getting there, it will be too expensive. But does it mean people are not exporting yam out of Nigeria? Yes, they are, but in some other forms. You can export uh, uh, dehydrated yam flakes. You can export yam powder. Uh, mainly the flakes, the dried ones, you know, the ones they use to make a labor and all. All those ones are being exported. So if you export that, your customers will now treat them, blend them, grind them, and export back to you as yam powder, which we use for our pound ATM. So, but for the fresh yam, please don't uh, try it. It's, it's a no-no. Idris wanted to know about uh, risk to reward ratio for vegetables. People are exporting vegetables. If it's uh, not profitable, they won't be doing it. Your vegetables is just like a spot of uh, flowers. Uh, depending on what price you get, what price it will cost you locally to source, what profit margin you are aiming at, what uh, the freight cost is, you will still make uh, good money. Uh, they, uh, then, if you are running away, every business has its own risk. So you can't continually and uh, permanently run away from risk. It's for you to calculate the level of risk you're willing to, to take and now venture into the line of business you want to. And I think that's the last question. Do we still have more questions? Moderator, do we still have more questions? Thank you so much, Mother. The, we don't have any questions again. I think I, but I have uh, one to answer. The, those that want to know how to, uh, the requirements to start, and all those that did not take part in the earlier session, if you are here, we, and if you registered for this session, we'll send you an email letter containing the link, the links to those videos, so you can watch them. They are all there on page television. Uh, YouTube channel, so we can sh we'll share that with you via email by tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, so. Please, uh, Namde, in the in the slides you'll be going, uh, you'll be sending out. Yeah. Include my resource center website also. Okay. So okay. that they can uh, the Akowe Initiative uh, website. Okay. I'll, I'll so get... that they can. I'll get the link then, I'll add it. Thank you. Okay, so add it so that they can uh, also have access to more resources. Okay. Uh, okay. So our case studies through class assignments on uh, shipment documentation for today is one, what is the full meaning of NES fee? Two, one B, what do you understand by NX key? 1C, what is the need for the fumigation of goods that are to be exported? Why do you want to fumigate? 1D, uh, this one is a small calculation. It says, I have a consignment with invoice value of 61,000 blah, 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 dollars, 61,309. 
and my exchange rate is uh, four seventy to the dollar. How much will be left in my current account that has a balance of four hundred thousand after issuing the next fee check? Remember, I had told us what the percentage is. I'm not going to repeat myself. So we will do all that. And uh, our next lecture series will be a continuation of this. That is the post-shipment documentation. What we have done today is to take the pre-shipment documentations. Documentations you need to be on ground, that need to be on ground before your consignment sells. So our next lecture series will then be a continuation of this. That is documentations that you need to now assess your payment after your consignment sells. Uh, because that one will be bringing money, I'm sure we'll find it more exciting than this one. But this is the foundation. You need to do this. If not, government will say you are into smuggling and we don't want to answer names and not do to us. We don't want to be like some celebrity.